Greetings everyone, this is part two of my uh, look into the Roland MT-32. Here I'm going to look at the MT-32 as a synthesizer, which was what it was designed for. I'm going to give you a link to part one if you want to check that one out. That one is looking into the MT-32 as a sound peripheral for MS-DOS computers. I think I'm also going to do a uh, little tack on to where I actually hook up the MT-32 to some games and just let you hear it for yourselves. But anyway, here's part two of my look into the Roland MT-32. We would be remiss if we talked about this unit in such a angelic light if we didn't first understand that this is not a sound card at all. It's not a sound card. It's not a sound blaster, you know, it's not a it's 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 a synth it's a genuine synthesizer. Uh, like <laughs> this stuff was becoming very popular in the 1980s, and bands were using them all the time to uh, mixed success. I, you know, I think I think the 80s. I think the people that use synthesizer in the 80s, have, you know, have really dated the music because it, I don't. A lot of it sounds terrible. But I think gent. Generally speaking, I think the 80s music that was good, that was still rock and roll oriented, was better than anything even today or even in the 70s or anything like that. It was the best music ever in the 80s when they actually cared and they didn't fucking play everything on a keyboard. But this was the product of 1980s synthesizers. And uh, it was marketed kind of towards the home end user, but it was way out of their price range anyway. We definitely need to talk about this as a pure synthesizer. What it was designed for. This was designed to be hooked up to a keyboard and played music across. And does it do that job at all? Let's hook this sucker up to a keyboard. Let's see what it sounds like. Hmm? All right, guys, so here is the MT-32 connected to a keyboard. Kind of a pain in the ass to get it to work. In order to get to work, you have the keyboard connected or whatever, and you just press all you want, nothing happens. On the MT-32, <laughs> You have to actually hit master volume and the five input button at the same time. You press one if I get it. I don't know. Uh, master, master first and then five, and then hit one. Now we have something. Let's uh, change the volume here. Type sound, I guess. I mean, this this keyboard has synth type sounds because it does have a unique sound. You know, those '80s synthesizers had unique sounds. So even modern keyboards, which can have much more realistic sounds, oftentimes have synthesizer sounds on them to get the, you know the, to emulate what these suckers could do back then. But. Uh, Guess what this is actually playing? What what am I actually playing? What's the damn thing? It's a slap bass. Like, like you don't get any bass at all unless you go to the very first octave of the, of the piano. change some instruments if we can. Acoustic piano. This is the kryptonite of this machine.
doesn't sound too bad coming out of the fucking radio. Right now I've got it connected to my, uh, to an FM transmitter, which is going to a radio nearby. I connected it to my computer so it would have, uh, you know, so you could hear the true sound of it, but, uh, the, whatever. It just, it delays itself slightly, and you can't play a keyboard and have shit being delayed. It's, it's impossible. It fucks with your mind. But it doesn't. Like, does it sound like a piano to you? No, it's not a piano. Let's turn the keyboard on. Not for the life of it, play a piano. And for whatever reason, like you could program this thing. You could, you could, uh, just like the Amiga, you could put your own sounds into it, but for whatever reason, like whatever they did, they could never do a piano. Like the closest I ever found was Wing Commander 2 and one sequence where like Jazz is playing a piano and it kind of. They, whatever they did to it made it somewhat believable. It was the best piano sound I ever heard on the MT32, but, you know, I, I don't know. For whatever reason, like, it, you know, it still it has a synthesizer nature to it. Even though you could put samples into it, it still was a synthesizer. And for whatever reason, like, it could never do a piano to save its life. What else do we got? Electric organ. That's okay. So we got a nice organ. Like generally speaking, the MT32 does nice orchestral sounds, uh, string instruments. It is very very realistic for the time. Um, more of the woodwinds and uh, acoustic, like pianos and things, like, yeah, it's stringed instruments. Eh, I don't know, some of them, yeah. Stringed instruments it does normally okay, besides the piano. Uh, woodwinds and such, not so much, but let's, okay, the organ sounds good. The harpsichord here. <laughs> keyboard than this it was a bit it was an 80s uh, synthesizer that I programmed it on and I really for that particular song I used a lot of synthetic or um, synthesizer brass instruments and it was very let's see if it, let's see it. Synthesize, brat. 
Okay, so that's not realistic. Not realistic, though. But it is. It says synthesized brass on it, though, so they were aware. What else? Bass, synthesized bass. Again, only at the very lowest octave. This is ridiculous. This is bass. That's not bass. No. It's just... Section one. That sounds more like it. Yeah, the strings, I'm not mad at the strings. Guitar. I, I'm, this thing sounds a lot better going through the radio, I gotta tell you. I think it hides a lot of its flaws. I, so I definitely heard, I listened to this stuff on the headphones before and it does not sound as good. Uh, my stereo is also equalized to sound good, so. It doesn't sound this good on the computer, I guarantee it. <laughs> Okay, for back then it's an okay uh, guitar. It's not. It's. I mean, let, let's play the guitar on the keyboard itself. Uh, I guess that would be a nylon, nylon guitar, I think. date they still can't do a convincing goddamn guitar. I mean, maybe you could do an acoustic guitar. <laughs> flute. Does it have a realistic flute?
some on. I'm gonna do on the drums here. Doesn't have anything over on the higher octaves. We got two octaves to work with with the timpani. It sounds okay. Orchestra hits. Games were trying to do a piano that would use the honky tonk, I think. What else? Okay, so here's acoustic piano one, two. piano. I think that's okay for an electric piano. Or a 1970s electric piano. Woo. Telephone. So it had all the same shit that uh, all the modern ones have. Bird tweeting. Take a look at them. 
portion on the upper left there. You'll see part one of this series on, on the Roland MD32 where I look at it on a DOS computer and it playing some games and sounding a thousand times better than the uh, traditional equipment everybody had back then via Sound Blaster and Adlib. Upper right, have me playing Psycho Pinball on the Sega Mega Drive, a European only release. A very nice pinball game, 16 bit pinball game. Have a look at that if you uh, want some gameplay uh, elements. That's what I do mostly here. Bottom left there, we have a Super 8 film. My most proud creation ever that I've ever done creatively. Right there, bottom left. Elegance, beauty. Check it out. I really hope you'll look at, look at that one. It's really short, three minutes, four minutes. Very nice. Bottom right there, I take a look at the Super 8 film format as a whole, talk about it. You can actually see me watching the one on the bottom left there for the first time ever on the one on the bottom right. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a nice one if you guys want to learn about the Super 8 stuff. And subscribe as always if you like this stuff. I will see you all later.